What is up guys and welcome to the 12th video in this series. In this video we are going to actually synchronize our ground and walls here and we're also going to just add a starting label um, just to indicate to the user that you have to tap to actually start the game. So to get started we need to we need to create a, um, a value for which the walls and the ground can use together in order to kind of synchronize their speed. So let's um, just go to the code here. We're gonna go into the constants file. I have that pulled up over here. And just a quick shortcut in case you guys don't know, um, I'm gonna just kind of put it to a single window here. If you hold down the Alt key, and then you click on one of these files, it will open it up in a um, kind of this helper window over here. It's just a really quick shortcut. It's useful to know in case you don't know that. And um, now we're gonna create our constant and I'm gonna call this, uh, the k default x to move per second constant. Now I know that's kind of a mouthful, but it kind of gives you exactly what we're trying to go for here. So I'm just saying, this is gonna be the default value for which the ground and the walls pull from when they are um, trying to synchronize their movement. So I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna make sure that the uh, computer here knows that we want a CG float. I'm going to just set this to a default value of 320.0. We can change that after we implement it. You guys can kind of mess with it, but um, that's just going to be the value we start with. So now let's go into our ML moving ground class here. So um, I have it pulled up here on the left, but Okay, yeah, so I pulled this up. So back in the start function, um, this is where we created the speed of our moving ground here. We can't actually just plug in the um, this constant we just made to right here, for instance, because um, per second, just because when we um, were creating this action before, we have it repeating itself after every time it moves that x amount so you'll see that when we actually if we were to try this um, you'll notice that it's going to give us this jump here so that's not okay we always need that x distance at least for our moving ground to be the entirety of our frames width so all i'm going to do here is i'm going to i'm still going to use this um, value here but we're going to create an adjusted duration in order to account for that. So I'm gonna create a uh, value up here. I'm gonna call this adjusted duration. And I'm gonna say this is going to be the frame.size.width over our k default x to move per second. And so what this is gonna do is it's going to increase our duration of one second so that um, it stays that synchronized X value, so it's still moving at this speed, but it's gonna move all the way across the screen before it actually repeats itself. So here I'm just gonna plug in adjusted duration, and let's just run this just to make sure it's not jumping around. Um, oh yeah, I, actually I also need to, we need to uh, cast this to an NS time interval, just because Xcode is picky about that stuff. So now when we run this, you're gonna see um, it's moving pretty slowly here. <laughs> Our walls aren't actually synchronized yet, so we need to do that. So um, that's gonna be a little bit easier. So let's go in here, let's go into our um, ML wall class. All we're gonna do is we're going to change this to uh, K default X to move per second because this one doesn't have to account for the fact that it repeats itself over and over again, so we can just plug in that value. And I think also we're going to have to um, make this adjusted duration go over to here. So now when we run this, we tap, you're gonna see that, awesome, we have our walls and our ground synchronized and we're all good there. And the reason we have to divide by two here is just because we had to divide by two for the width because we're not actually moving the entirety of the um, node over. So just to account for that, you do, you do the divided by two there. So awesome, looks like we have our, <clears throat> we 
walls and ground synchronized. Now let's create a really quick start label. So let's go into our game scene file here. And under wall generator, I'm going to uh, put add start label. And let me just like pull something up over here really quick. And um, okay, so let's get started here. So I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna call this the tap to start label. And this is going to be a new type of node that we haven't used yet. It's going to be the SK label node. And this um, this is a node which just takes, takes and renders text for you. Um, you can set the text color, size, and it's just an easy way to add text to the screen. For our text, I'm going to say um, tap to start. And I'm going to real quick here, just set its position. I'm going to say this is the position equal to view dot uh, center here. So we just want to kind of center the tap to start label. It's not actually going to be completely centered just yet, um, but we'll get to that in just a sec. I just want to kind of get it added to the screen. And um, we're going to say tap to start label. We want its font color equal to UI color dot black color. And real quick there, I'm just gonna add child, tap to start label. And let's just kind of see what that looks like. Awesome, so it looks like we have um, our tap to start label. We have this uh, semi-synchronized, the tap to start label doesn't really disappear yet. I think, um, oh yeah, I thought, um, Never mind. I thought the video was going too long, but so let's just actually try to get this all set up then. So I'm going to go to the tap to start label. One thing that we're going to do is we're going to set the name of the tap to start label. And it seems kind of repetitive, but we're just going to say tap to start label dot name equals tap to start label. And the reason that we do this is that the name is what uh, kind of indicates nodes around um, in SpriteKit. So if you want to actually access this node, you can use this other function called child node with name, tap to start label. And this would get the same tap to start label that we just created here. And the reason we need to do this is in our start function, we're gonna have to actually make that disappear when it starts. So I'm gonna set the name to that. We're going to um, positions there. I'm just gonna set the font name to Helvetica just because I like that font. It's a good default font. I'm also going to, to actually center this. Oh, it's actually already centered. I was doing something before that actually set the um, set the centering of the label. I thought it was kind of adjusted to the right there, but actually that's not even not even a thing. So we are just going to uh, move the label up then. So I'm gonna say uh, view.position.let's dot dot, split this up into two things here. So when we're setting the position, I wanna say position.x equals view.center.x. And then when we're positioning the y, I wanna say this equal to view.center.y plus 40. So that's gonna get us, um, that's gonna get us kind of a good positioning for the start label. Maybe it's a little big here, so we'll say uh, that the start label dot font size is equal to, uh, let's say like 22 here. Okay, so sorry, that was like a little bit haphazard. I was kind of jumping around there. It's just a lot of little things you have to do to kind of set up the label. So that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to quickly on the start function, I'm just gonna say uh, what I was talking about earlier, I'm gonna get access to the tap to start label through its name. So I'm gonna say, let's tap to start label equal child node with name tap to start label. And remember that um, this child known with name function is just a function of our current file here. So it's, that is an SK scene function. It's also an S, it's just an SK label node function. So say you had, um, 
your hero, you know how we like we put the eyes inside the hero. If we were to give each eye a name, we would access that eye by doing the child known with name method within the body of the hero. And that was a mouthful, but um, don't worry about it too much if you guys didn't quite catch all of it. So I'm gonna say let tap to start label equals that. And all I'm gonna say is tap to start label dot remove from parent. And so when we start this, it's, we have tab to start there. We tap, tap, the label node is gonna go away. Awesome, so um, that's gonna be it for this video. I know that was kind of boring because we just like, it was kind of just some upkeep stuff. But in the next video, we're going to start with collision detection. And collision detection is a lot of fun. So I will see you guys in the next one.